Welcome to November 2024 block of the month and we're going to be assembling our quilt this month. So very exciting. We're going to get it all finished. So to begin, I'm going to be working on my side borders where the blocks are and I'm going to add a sashing strip on each side of these two larger blocks. So Okay, I'm just going to keep going adding sashings to the blocks and the way that the blocks were designed they are all equal quadrants so it doesn't matter which way they're turned they're going to look the same regardless of which way you turn them so that's that's nice we don't have to worry about a top or whatever so um, I'm just going to go ahead and keep adding the sashings. When we have all of our blocks added to the row, I am going to go ahead and just press it so that my seams are going towards the sashing pieces that we added. They're just going to lay flatter because there are no seams in that one. So I'll press all those and then the two side borders are done and I'm going to go ahead and start on the top and bottom borders. On the top and bottom rows, I'm going to go ahead and add the sashing to the four blocks before I add the blocks into the row because it's just easier to add a smaller piece to a smaller piece than to have a whole row of blocks and then try to add um, this little sashing while the roll row is fallen. Now I'm going to start working on the borders that are going to go around our center snowflake uh, section and so I'm just going to make one giant strip of border and then subcut it into the size I need so I'm just gonna sew these end to end until they're all sewn together Okay, I've taken my seafoam border strip and I've cut the size that I need for the sides of my center snowflake uh, unit here and I have found the center of my border piece and pinned that on the center of my quilt and then I pinned the two ends and then in the middle of each of those. So I did add a few pins and it is getting harder to manage because it's we've got bigger pieces now and so I've kind of accordion folded this onto itself so that it kind of fits on my tabletop here. I also have an ironing board next to it, next to my table so that, you know, if it needs to go up on that, just so that I don't have anything pulling on the quilt as I'm sewing. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start stitching on the border.
Okay, I'm getting close to the end of sewing my binding on. I'm coming upon where I started. So I'm going to sew and leave a space about 12 inches or so. And then I do like to backstitch where I've started and stopped sewing and now I have this gap. I'm going to cut my threads and then I'll show you how I join my binding strips. Okay, I'm at my ironing board and I've positioned it so that the gap is spread evenly over the ironing board itself. And then I am going to fold in and have my binding strips meet so that there is a quarter inch gap. So I've just folded it back onto itself and I've left about, um, let's see, I cut these two and a half inches so I've left a longer space than that. So there's probably about four inches there and then I folded that back and then I'm just gonna lay it flat and so that they're approximately a quarter inch apart. And then I'm just gonna shift that so I can put my iron right on it. And then I'll have a nice crease right in there. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bunch up the backing fabric here to close in that gap that I left open. And then I'm going to take my longer binding strip and fold it out and open it up. And then I can, my folds and creases there kind of make an X on it. And then the binding piece that's on this side where I started, I'm going to lay the fold of it along that crease line also centering this crease line along the center of that piece of binding. And so I'm just gonna open that up then. And I now have it right sides together. All the lines are meeting as far as where I have my creases and folds. And then I'm going to take a pin and pin the top section and this bottom section here and I'm actually going to be sewing right through here. So I'm sewing parallel to my quilt edge here. And so right between those two pins I'm just going to start here, come through that center fold and to the other side. So let's go do that now. Okay now I'm just going to join those two binding at binding strip and ends there. Okay, and let's take it out and see what that looks like. I'm going to clip my threads. Okay, and then I'm going to take out my pins. And then let's kind of unbunch our quilt back here and I'm going to flatten out that part of the quilt and then my binding just popped in folded neatly how it's supposed to be and so then I can come back I'm gonna kind of open it up and then just trim the binding tails off so that I'm leaving a quarter inch seam and so those little pieces will just discard. And then now we can press that open or just press it to one side and then stitch that um, rest of the binding then onto the quilt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. It's pretty flat right there, so I'm okay without pressing it.
And then I'm going to stitch past where I first started stitching on the binding and I'm going to come past it a good half an inch to an inch and do a little back stitch and then I know that those ends there are secure and then cut my threads. And now when I unfold this, I'm going to give it a really good press. I'm going to put my iron right up against that and press my binding to the outer point of the quilt so that when I wrap it around the front, it's already kind of folded and ready to go. And then I'm just going to stitch it down. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start stitching. So I stitched it to the back side and now I'm wrapping it around to the front and I'm just doing a straight stitch, like a top stitch, right next to the fold on the binding. So let's get started. And I am gonna back stitch because I definitely want that to be held into place. I don't want the binding coming off. And since I press that towards to come around the front, it just folds nicely up and around so that I'm not fighting it. I'm not, I don't have to go around and pin it or clip it. You can, I've also seen where you could put some glue on there, but I'm okay just holding it and stitching it at the same time. And you just go a little ways and reposition. Okay, and now let's see if we can take a look at that. So there it is, wrapped around. And then I've just top stitched right along that edge there. And we'll just keep going all the way around the quilt. Okay, I'm getting close to a corner. So I'm gonna stitch a little bit towards the corner. I'm gonna clip some of these threads. And then before I get to the corner, I'm going to kind of manipulate it a little bit, wrap it around, make sure everything's laying flat. I tend to come to this edge first and fold it out like this. So it's kind of wrapped around that corner. And then when you fold it back on itself, that's what creates that miter right there. So now I can sew into it and I'm going to drop my needle there turn it and stitch a few stitches so that the binding there on the miter seam is actually held in place and then turn and come down the other side of the quilt. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and this is where I might use a pair of scissors or a stiletto to kind of hold that fold in place and I'm gonna stitch right to it and then lift my presser foot. I'm gonna stitch about three stitches just so it's really secure, it's held in place. I wouldn't want the binding to come off of the quilt and then later have to repair it. So I do whatever I can while I'm stitching it now to make sure that it's definitely held in place. And then a few more stitches there and then just continue down the other side, folding and sewing. Okay, and I can kind of show you on the back side, I have, from the front, I've pulled it over so it's crossing over the stitching line where I've attached it on the back. So when I fold this over, you can see that it is over that line of stitching. So when I come back and stitch it, then on the back side, my stitches are just falling onto the back side of the quilt, kind of about an eighth of an inch or so away from the binding. But I'm also using the same color of thread that I use for my quilting, so it just kind of blends in with it. Um, I don't really like it when it jumps over on some of the binding and then it, it comes back off, that kind of thing. So I like it when it's just a nice little stitch line next to that binding on the back side. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the quilt.